was in primary school, I first learned about the concept of waste and recycling and the idea that my actions could impact on the entire planet. When I was in high school, I learned that the fossil fuels that powered my home were not an infinite supply, and in fact, the more we used them, the more problematic they became. As a teenager, I was a massive pain to my family, making them turn off lights and appliances, being a general teenage greenie. But at some point, I had an epiphany. As an individual, I was completely trapped by the underlying systems that ran my world. If I wanted to make a difference on a global scale, I would have to change those systems. Now, when I was a teenager, the same as today, the majority of electricity in Australia, and New South Wales in particular, came from coal-fired power. Have you ever wondered how a lump of black rock lets you watch Netflix for hours on end? Well, first the coal is burnt to make heat, and we use that heat to boil water to make steam, and that steam has a high enough pressure so that it can push a turbine, which has magnets inside it, and the movement of those magnets generates electricity. Now, because thermodynamics is a thing, we can never fully convert one type of energy, like heat, into another type of energy, like movement. In fact, in coal-fired power stations, we start off with 100% of the chemical energy of the coal, and what ends up as electricity is closer to about 30% of that energy. The rest is lost, mostly as heat the surroundings. 30%! What a waste! Imagine if you only took home 30% of your pay every week and tax took the rest. You still did all the work, but you only get a fraction of the benefit. Or what if you, for every apple you bought, you could only ever take three bites and then you had to throw the rest away every single time. You would have to buy so many apples, which also happens when you have a toddler. Um, so in the 1990s, the NASA Voyager took the first ever portrait of our solar system. It shows Earth as a tiny little speck on a large black background. Famous astrophysicist Carl Sagan has a fantastic quote about what's known as the pale blue dot, which I'll paraphrase because it's quite long. He says, that's us, that's home. There, everyone you've ever known, everyone you've ever heard of and loved through all of human history has lived out their lives aggregate of humanity's joy and suffering has all taken place on this tiny little pixel in a vast and uncaring cosmic dark. The way I think of it is not just every person, but every resource that kept that person alive, the survival of our species is all concentrated onto this tiny little dot that's staggeringly finite. We can't afford to be so wasteful. And we also can't keep pumping carbon dioxide in emissions into the air at such damaging rates. And when we have low efficiency, we have really high emissions. Now, when we burn coal, carbon, in air, oxygen, we make CO2 plus heat. But actually equating air to oxygen isn't quite right. In fact, the majority of the air that we breathe is nitrogen. It's not oxygen, nitrogen. So when we burn coal in air, the majority of the gas that we produce is actually nitrogen. The carbon dioxide component of it is relatively small. So if we want to capture that and sequester it effectively underground, first we have to separate it out of the flue stream. And that is a very expensive, at the moment, and energy intensive process. And that energy is known as parasitic energy because it sucks power that's already been generated by the plant away. So instead of being 30% efficient, if we use carbon capture, we're now 20% efficient. Very, very wasteful. Now the act of removing carbon dioxide or trying to limit or reduce emissions from coal-fired power is known as clean coal. You may have heard it bandied about by some politician or another. And don't get me wrong, I actually think we should be using clean coal. Hear me out, I am not a supervillain or in the employ of the Trump administration. So, consider Australia's attempts to transition away from fossil fuels. The recent Finkel report, which was laid out in 2017, showed a future energy scenario that was still using coal all the way out to 2050. 
and that was considered ambitious. The CSIRO has done some similar modelling, which also relies fairly heavily on coal all the way out to 2050. And if we want to eliminate emissions or put a cap on emissions, which we should, then it also relies on carbon capture and storage options. The IPCC, the International Panel on Climate Change, our climate watchdogs, they show that when you limit the technology you're allowed to use in order to meet emission, future emission scenarios, costs go up. And politicians hate spending money. So, we should be trying, if we're going to keep using coal out to 2050, shouldn't we be doing it as efficiently as we possibly can and trying to limit the emissions of this coal as much as possible? Now, most clean coal technologies try to decrease emissions by increasing efficiency. Uh, and the way they do that is they make the steam that's generated in that process as hot and as pressurised as possible so it can really push that turbine. Even when it does this, though, it's still, you still got to capture the carbon dioxide, so you're losing efficiency there. There is another option called oxyfuel combustion, that you can use oxygen and burn the carbon in pure oxygen, and then it burns really, really hot, as well as making a pure carbon dioxide stream. Problem solved, right? First, we've got to separate the oxygen from the air, which is not a straightforward process. So, looking at these types of technologies, the best possible outcome, if we're going to have a, a traditional heli or high efficiency, low emission coal um, power station, efficiencies are about 40%. Give or take 5%. Still not that great. Clean coal, truly effective clean coal, is not a myth. It is not equivalent to flying pigs or nature reserves for pink unicorns, which I have seen it referred to as. It's real. But you probably haven't heard of the technology that makes it a reality. The technology generates a pure carbon dioxide stream, no need for any gas separation at any point. It has realisable efficiencies of over... 80%, very high, and more importantly, it doesn't produce any particulates, NOx or SOx emissions, which contribute to smog, acid rain, and other issues in the health of the population. The technology is called the Direct Carbon Fuel Cell, the DCFC, and I and my team at the University of Newcastle have been working hard to make this a reality over the last five years. The DCFC doesn't muck around trying to make steam as hot as possible. In fact, the coal isn't burnt at all. Instead, we use a fuel cell, which uses electrochemical reactions, which are chemical reactions which also involve the consumption or generation of electrons for electricity. So, we are converting chemical energy to electrical energy in a single step. And that's how we get such high efficiencies. I'm not going to lie, it's a challenging system. The electrochemical oxidation of carbon is complicated. It's a high temperature fuel cell, which makes everything more difficult. And engineering a fuel cell to use a solid fuel compared to a gaseous fuel like hydrogen also has its challenges. But we believe we can make this technology commercially competitive in the next five years. And it has to be the next five years if we want to make it any difference to global emissions. Now, we are going to make it work, and it's also, okay, that's the other thing, it will also allow us to build infrastructure for this very high efficiency coal-fired power that is transitionable to renewable energy, because the direct carbon fuel cell operates on any carbon-based fuel, including biomass. But here's another important statement. The DCFC is not the answer to all our problems. In fact, I strongly believe there is no single silver bullet technology that's going to swoop in and save us. Instead, imagine if we had multiple technologies filling niche markets with generation matched to demand and local available resources in a synergistic and complicated flow of energy between users and producers, increasing efficiency, reducing waste and eliminating emissions. I work in clean coal, yes. I also work in water splitting for hydrogen, in biomass-based energy, and in sustainable materials development for batteries. A future energy system must think outside the box. And it's these technologies that maybe you've never heard of before that are going to make up at least part 
of the solution. Thank you.